all, so today we're going to go over some of the account services for your student organization. All right, so a little bit about myself is that my name is Ali Garcia. I am the Financial Services and Student Organization Account Coordinator for ASI, which stands for Associated Students Incorporated. I've been with ASI for about a year, and part of my role is to help guide you on how to manage your on-campus funds account. So both ASI and Student Leadership and Involvement Center are here to support your org in various ways. SLIC is able to help with recognition and officer agreement forms and many other aspects. ASI helps with the account side of your org, specifically overseeing your on-campus funds account. ASI offers different funding opportunities for your organization and helps monitor the funds that you raise for your org. My goal is to show you how to offer your org's account the proper attention and management needed to make it be successful. And all of this, we work side by side with your success in mind. So some of the things that we're going to go over today are some account basics, how to deposit funds, how to check and use the funds that are in your account, an expenditure request form, and some other required forms that you might need to fill out. So some basics about your account. All student organization on-campus accounts are monitored through ASI. And each recognized student org has a unique five-digit code that's called a fund number. So it'll typically start with nine, one, and three unique numbers. If you currently don't know what your student org's fund number is, reach out to me and I can give you that information. This number is how we're able to track your org's revenue and expenses. So basically what's coming in and what's going out of your org. Some really important things to keep in mind is that you should keep a shadow budget for your org. This is basically letting you properly budget and have an idea of what should be coming into your account, what should be in your account, and what expenses you have for the future. Keep in mind that all student org accounts do operate on a reimbursement basis, which means that you will need to pay for purchases out of pocket and then be reimbursed with the funds that are in your student org account. And so the shadow budget really comes in handy because your org account cannot fall beneath zero and your shadow budget will help you understand how much you're able to afford and what purchases you should and should not be making. So for example, if you make an out of pocket purchase and you want to be reimbursed, but that reimbursement would mean your org's account falls beneath zero, I wouldn't be able to approve it and you wouldn't be able to be reimbursed. So in order to prevent that situation, Make sure you keep that shadow budget, and then you have a fairly clear idea of your student org budget. So the first question a lot of people have is, well, how do you put money into your account, or how do you deposit? So you can either do cash or check for your account, and if you're doing cash, you can deposit either in the mail or drop it off. If you're mailing a check, you mail it to the following address, and you make sure that you put attention cashier's office. This is going to help route that envelope to where it needs to go. If you decide to deposit cash, that has to be in person, so it must be dropped off. And right now, in-person deposits are being directed to the drop-off box in front of the cashier's office in Craven. So whether you are depositing cash or you're mailing or dropping off a check, you need a deposit form. This deposit form lets us know where the funds are coming from, what they were raised from, and where they should go. This deposit form can be found at the Student Organization and Account Services website. So, let's go over there. Okay. If you scroll down to the bottom, you're able to see in the forms your deposit form. And you can see a blank deposit form. So here you'll see the student organization name, the detail code, and the fund number. They all aren't filled out. So if you're looking for a form that is fully filled out, you can reach out to myself and I'm able to give you that information. All right, so now you have your deposit form. And one more thing to keep in mind when you're depositing is that the cashier's office should be aware whenever you're going to do any large scale deposits. So if the check is a large amount, or if you have a large amount of dollars or a large amount of coins, let me know. We can reach out to the cashier's office 
and we can make sure that they're able to help get your funds into your account as safely and quickly as possible. Okay, so here we have an example of what a filled out deposit form should look like. So you can see there's a broad category of pizza fundraiser and then in the sales tracking portion, it goes a little bit more in depth and tells you more of an itemized look at what's happening. You're able to see how much cash, coin, check, um, all of that information that's really going to help paint a whole picture of what this deposit is about. And then don't forget to add your signatures at the bottom and attach these and you're all set. One more thing to keep in mind is if you are having a check created for you or you're creating a check for your org, is to always make sure that it's written out to Associated Students Incorporated. That way they know to send it our way and we're able to deposit directly into your fund account. So for example, here we have in the memo, we have the name of the org and the fund number and the check itself is written out to ASI, which would be perfect. So now we have funds in our account and we want to see where we can check our account balance. So there's two different ways of confirming your account's balance. There's one through the Student Organization Account Services page, and that's updated weekly. And there's also a drill down of account details from ASI that I'm able to provide for you. So if we go back to our Student Organization Account Services page down at the bottom where it says information, you're able to see student org balances. So this shows all of the student org's fund numbers and their balances. And if you're ever wondering why it's that total amount, again, just reach out to me and I can let you know what's come into your org's account and what's come out of your org's account. And we can double check all of those different details together. All right. And now we know that we have funds in our account. We know where they're coming from and we wanna know one more thing. Okay, we wanna know how to use our funds. So with the funds in your account, you can either be reimbursed with your org's money for approved purchases or with your org's money, you can pay a vendor either a check or with the ASI credit card. So no matter what type of purchase that you want to make for your org, it all starts with an ERF. An ERF stands for an expenditure request form. And that can also be found on the Student Organization and Account Services website. So we're here again and we scroll down to forms. We see expenditure request form. We click down on the drop down list. All right. And so this is just going to be what lets Adobe Sign know, the platform that we use our ERF on, it's going to let Adobe Sign know who needs to fill out the form and who needs to sign the form. So the requester is going to be the person that wants to fill out the form, and typically this is gonna be your treasurer. So you have your requester, which can be the same email as your treasurer, enter in their email, and then the signing authority, the president, advisor, treasurer, have those all filled out. All right, and then right here, it's super important that you remember to change the document name. This lets me see very clearly which ERF is which. So essentially, if you have any questions about it and say, hey, I'm wondering about being reimbursed for this pizza that I bought for my org. If you write, well, this is a bird watching org and it's a pizza refund in the document name, I'm able to see that much clearly rather than this auto populated name that every ERF receives. And then I go sifting through it trying to find the right one. So once all of this is sent, you can hit submit and you will see a page that looks like this. So this is what an example of a filled out ERF for an org being reimbursed would look like, or for an org member being reimbursed would look like. So as you can see right here, this is the requester's information. And so that's the person that filled out the form. So I'm able to know that they're looking for all of this information, this is where the org's coming from. And this right here is the email that I'm going to use when I need to contact someone about any questions I have for this year. And then we also have the check recipient information. So this one's super important because this is who's receiving the check. So I need to know their name, I need to know their address, and a little bit about the items that they purchased. And it's incredibly important that you remember that this address right now is the only way for me to contact this person or to have that check sent to them. 
because right now we're not able to offer picking up your check in person and we have to mail them. So make sure that this is the most recent address for this student. In the case that you wanna make a purchase with the ASI credit card, all you have to do is change the recipient information to say ASI credit card, and then all of ASI's information, and I can reach out to you and we can make an appointment to use the ASI credit card. So a couple of things to remember about using the ASI credit card is that it does operate on a first come first serve basis and purchases over a certain amount do require additional approval, not just the signing authorities from your org. So keep several things in mind as you're trying to budget for those larger scale purchases and work with me and we can try and find out what's the best plan for your org. Now, there's also going to be a different type of invoice that your org may have to pay, which would be a campus invoice. And that's basically when you use um, goods or services from event, events and conference services on campus or the USU. It might look something like this. It's going to have an invoice number, the overall amount due, the org name, the event type, and then down here is all the recipient information. And so basically, you're just able to plug all of this into an ERF and get that invoice paid for. And as you can see, the only difference between this one and the ASI credit card one is that it's going to be a check made to the cashier's office. All right. So no matter what route we are choosing, whether that be reimbursing a member, paying a vendor via check or the ASI credit card, there are a couple of requirements that have to be fulfilled. And for all of them, it starts with an ERF. For reimbursing an org member, you need an ERF and a receipt, which shows me proof of purchase. For paying a vendor, you need an ERF, an invoice that lets me know how much needs to be paid, not how much was paid. This must be over $100, and you may need a payee data form. And we'll talk about what a payee data form means in just a minute. For an ASI credit card, you're going to need an ERF, you're going to need an invoice with an invoice number, this also must be over $100, and there must be a receipt within three days of purchase. And so the reason that we offer this service to orgs to pay a vendor via check or credit card is to make sure that there's no undue financial burden placed on students. So we wanna help make sure that you're as successful as possible, and these are some of the several ways that we're able to provide additional services. So to kind of break it down, here's what the process typically looks like. You confirm your account balance, you receive approval from your officers and you make a purchase. Then you turn in an ERF with appropriate backup documentation, whether that be the invoice, the receipts, what have you. And in one to two weeks, a check will be created and mailed. So some of the things that can slow this process down. There's a new student or vendor to the system, meaning it's the first time that either that student or that vendor has received a check um, or inadequate backup documentation. And one new aspect that could be slowing down the process for us this semester is gonna be mailing. Because as I said, we're not able to offer pickup options for our checks, they all have to be mailed. And this is gonna be somewhat new for all of us. So we have to just kind of adapt and make sure that we're able to stay in communication and get all of your checks going where they need to be as quickly as possible. So, <clears throat> if you are a new vendor or you have a new vendor to the system that you want to add in, you'd be filling out a payee data form, which looks like this. And basically all that it does is verify that this org is correct. It gives all that identifying information, their name, their address. And this is a form that you again can find on the student org uh, account services website down at the bottom and you're able to send it to that vendor and they're able to fill it out themselves and return it back to you. That can be sent to me and they'll be put in. Some additional backup documentation that you would need to provide. So all reimbursements require a receipt as backup documentation. This must show proof of purchase. And backup documentation must include a date of purchase, contact information of the vendor, an itemization, which are itemization, which basically just means that the receipt must be an itemized one. It must tell me exactly what was bought and for how much. Tax, if it's applicable, 
Um, what form of payment was used, whether that be cash, card, check, and uh, a transaction or invoice number. So to go over some of these, here's an example of two inadequate forms of backup documentation, meaning that they would not be able to be approved. So you can see this one on the left, it looks good. It has the contact information, it has the date, it has itemization, um, all of the amounts, tax, but down here at the bottom where it says balance due. So basically what this is telling me is this is how much someone owes a place, not necessarily how much they've paid. And so because of that, I'm not able to confirm that a purchase was made. And then I'm not able to reimburse that purchase. On the right, we have one that does confirm that a purchase was made of $55, but I don't know what, it was, what was purchased. And so in order for me to be able to prove it, I have to know what exactly was purchased and make sure that it's one of the approved items that you're able to purchase. So these two wouldn't be able to be approved, but these two would. So you can see this one, you know, the date, where they bought it, what they bought, how much it was, the tax, the credit card, or the form of payment, which would be credit card, and it's all good. Same with this one on the right, you're able to see where it was purchased, the item, the amount, the tax, how it was purchased, the proof of purchase is that it was on a card, and that would be approved as well. So if you have any questions about any of this backup documentation, because sometimes it can be a little tricky, please feel free to reach out to me. I know that that was a lot of dense information, so just to kind of bring it back and do a quick overview of everything, you start off by depositing money. So this is money into your account that you can spend with the proper approval. Then you're going to plan your purchase. So talk to your officers, check your shadow budget, and see what's realistic for your org. Go ahead and make that purchase and don't forget a receipt. Then you're able to gather all that documentation, so receipt, pay data form, contact information, what have you. And then it is ERF time, so you head over to Adobe Sign, fill that out, and then once everything is good and I've looked over it, it'll be approved and you'll be reimbursed, so be on the lookout for a mail check. So thanks everyone for listening. Let me know if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. You can contact me at algarcia at csusm.edu or at the general ASI email, asi at csusm.edu. So again, thank you very much. And please let me know if you have any questions. I really look forward to working with you all this semester. And I'm more than happy to have any Zoom calls that you may want or answer any emails. I'm here to support y'all. And I really look forward to working with you. So thank you again.